We saw in the last lesson that a third order Lagrange polynomial can be represented as four equations and four unknowns. In a similar, but not identical fashion, here I represent a second order polynomial. Notice that coordinate pairs occur in the first three lines, x0, y0, x1, y1, and x2, y2. But the fourth line has a generic x and y. At the bottom of the screen, I've simply moved everything to the left-hand side and set it equal to zero. The previous system of four equations can be represented by the product of a four by four matrix and a vector. There are two ways this system can equal zero. One is for the coefficients a, b, and c to equal zero. That would be trivial. Furthermore, the fourth entry would be equivalent to saying that one equals zero. Nonsense. So that means we must go with the other option. That would be to say the four by four matrix is not linearly independent. This is a linear algebra concept that we could spend a long time discussing. For now, just know that we must set the determinant equal to zero. That's another significant linear algebra concept, but bear with me for a moment. There are rules to calculate the determinant of a matrix. One trick is to use what is called cofactor expansion. The next four slides will show what that means using color coordination. First, we take y0 and multiply by the determinant in the red box. Likewise for y1. This time the red box looks a bit different. It includes every term of the four by four that is not in either the second row or fourth column. Y2 is very similar. The red box excludes any term in either the third row or fourth column of the four by four matrix. Lastly, Y. It should also be noted that every other term, Y0 and Y2, in the expansion is negative. This is an important detail. Let's take the first term on the last screen and do a cofactor expansion on it. Once again, the next few slides will demonstrate this process in color coordination. Similar idea as before, just this time it's on a three by three instead of a four by four matrix. Remember that the determinant of a two by two matrix is quite simple. It is the difference in diagonal products as seen by the purple underline. Multiply x2 squared in the top left by x in the bottom right. Next, multiply x squared in the bottom left by x2 in the top right. Now subtract the second term from the first. The same rule applies for this slide and the next. The terms above the purple line were pulled from the purple box once again. It's just that the purple box is a bit different each time. Same rule here as well. Then I just did a bit of algebra to rearrange the terms. The red, green, and blue will connect this result to that on the next slide. Follow through the algebra if you like. The point I want to make is that the determinant of the first three by three matrix is equal to the first line on this screen. We can go through the same process with each of the others. Feel free to do so on your own time. Here I have simply summarized the results of that process. Now all together with the first one we found. Notice I have also labeled them K0, K1, K2, and K3. This is just a symbol to conveniently express them in shorthand. On top, we see the cofactor expansion from the beginning of this lesson. In the second line, I have condensed the expression with our Ks. In the third line, I divide each term by k3. Lastly, in the fourth line, I rearrange the terms to isolate y on the left-hand side. For fear of cluttering the screen, I did not use any color coordination on this slide. Also, I reasoned that if you are still watching this video, you are likely the kind of person who is not disinclined to slog through the algebra for yourself. For that, I commend you. The details are here for you to pursue at your own pace. The main point is that the last line shows the format of the Grange interpolation we first became familiar with in part one of this lesson series. And this all followed 
from setting the determinant of a matrix equal to zero. I concede that to understand this derivation, a knowledge of linear algebra beyond novice level is required. It's also perfectly acceptable if some people don't think at this level. I would say the important things for now are to understand why interpolation is useful, know why Lagrange interpolation is unique compared to Gregory Newton, and be able to pull out your calculator and actually compute an interpolated value from given data. Thanks again for sticking with me this far. Next time we are going to explore some further nuances of interpolation and tricks to overcome those obstacles. Feel free to post any questions you may have in the comment section below so we can have a constructive discussion. Otherwise, I will see you next time.